is today I will, I will be talking to you guys about BYD. Now, BYD is a car manufacturer that produces many EV cars. BYD is obviously different um, to the cars that I obviously usually speak about. Um, one of the reasons being is because it's very kind of innovative. It's forward thinking. Sorry, I'm just trying to... Now, BYD is obviously different to the cars that I usually, usually speak about. And one of the reasons is because it is kind of um, electric vehicle, but it's an electric vehicle with a twist. I find that this car is very, very innovative. Like, who would have thought of something like this? Do you know what I mean? This car, the BYD vehicle, is very creative. And this obviously can be seen in the interior of the car. Do you know what I mean? When I feel like when you enter, um, when you enter the car... You want to obviously go to the gym, that's for sure. When I entered the car, I felt like I wanted to go to the gym. Before going into the car, well, before going into the interior of the car, let me tell you more, obviously, about BYD. Now, BYD stands for Build Your Dream, and it's innovation, um, to say the least. Mentally friendly. In the last quarter, they made 631 million. Now, that's not bad for a company. I say this because its competitor, which is Tesla, um, sold 386,000 and made 11, no, and made 1.1 billion in sales. Now, that's a lot of cars being sold. That's a lot, a lot of cars being sold. Now, Tesla obviously outdone BYD in the last quarter by five by 462 million pounds now that is a lot of money and track and obviously discuss the atoll you're probably thinking why talk about the atoll it's not a supercar it's not a hypercar it's not even because it couldn't even be considered a luxury suv no it's neither one of those things however i would say that it is very very an innovative forward-thinking car and I think that is essentially what sets it apart from other um, cars which is very simple now the fact that it is obviously innovative and forward-thinking to say the least it it obviously makes you want to it obviously makes you want to get in some type of motion. Do you know what I mean? To say the least. So when you sit in the driver's seat, you are obviously presented with a steering wheel showing you how fast your driving is, which I think is quite... Um, pointless really. I really think that's quite pointless. Um, I prefer, I honestly prefer the clock you normally see behind a normal car. Um, take a look at what I'm talking about. I just don't see the point of it. Um, I honestly feel that, you know, I feel like, I feel like BYD, um, interior in particular has drawn inspiration from other cars and kind of immaculated that into one. Now, I feel like the key factor, but I, you know what I feel? I feel like a key factor of what I noticed was the simple fact that the car looks something out of a gym. It really does. Just take a look at the interior and see what I'm talking about. The comfort and the design. The design is the top spec. Uh, remove your, um, flip your red thing. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, the design is the top spec. So on the design, you get an electric tailgate. Mm -hmm. um, you get tinted back windows, and you mm -hmm. get a larger infotainment screen than this. But mm -hmm. today we're sitting in the comfort model. Mm -hmm. um, so most of the things you'll be using on the steering wheels. I'll show you the 360 degree view surround view monitor so you can have that up at all times not just for parking as well which is a very helpful option good for safety especially um here you have your intelligence cruise control which can be set up to 60 miles per an hour and it's just a steer assist so just have to have your hands on the wheel and then it will 
break and accelerate for you which is very helpful um, also this is your forward collision assist so for when you're on the motorway and your lane keep assist as well it's very helpful so those are the most of the things you'll be using and then if your infotainment screen um, you can get it to your phone so you can get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as well and at the front here you have your wireless charging system and then you have some extra storage underneath here and underneath here as well so mm -hmm. yeah you have a few options but that's most of the things you'll be using It's obviously very deep, like very, very deep. Take a look. So you get enough kind of space to put whatever you want there, really. Up with the hand rest is very similar to that of a treadmill, as it has ripples engraved all the way across it. I took, um, I took the car out for a drive, and let me tell you, it's very quick. It was. It was a smooth drive. It has obviously different speeds that you can adjust accordingly. And I just feel like it's a very kind of unique and different car. When you look at the car, it's obviously you get the gear selector, which looks like dumbbells. Because why would it be shaped like that otherwise? Because that's what I was thinking. My first thought was this looks like dumbbells. Um, then you obviously have the monitor, which is obviously at the center of the car and is very and it's very much your typical monitor you can obviously um listen to music you can connect your um devices um then obviously at the door um there are obviously strings now these strings are now these for me these strings are very intriguing like why would you why would you really put three strings at the door do you know what i mean there yeah why would you put three strings at the door it don't make no sense to me um and the thing is when you pull on a string it really sounds like you're trying to make music my initial thought was 
manager thought was maybe they put that in place to prevent things from obviously falling out but maybe this is just a kind of different outlook or different take on the interior of the car now the next thing i found is when you obviously move to the back of the car it's even kind of more spacious than the front by far it has significantly um it has significantly less going on you're probably wondering how so well Obviously, when you're at the front of the seat, there's so much, like, you've got the gear, you've got the gear stick, you've got the dashboard, you've got so much going on at the front. And with some higher luxury cars, you also get so much going on at the back. But this one, it doesn't have so much going on at the back. First off, three people could obviously get in the passenger side of the car. However, um, yeah, however, three people can get in the back side or the passenger side. However, three people can get in the back. However, if you decide to obviously put the hand rest down the number of past the number of people that you can carry in the back is significantly limited probably about two um um now the back i feel like is very spacious it's huge it kind of reminds me it kind of reminds me of um a cullinan a royce royce she said huge it kind of reminds me of a royce royce cullinan the car is very compact um from the outside and you would probably not think that there is there is enough space, but there is of the car. It's actually very big. The boot is very spacious, is deep, and I mean deep, deep, deep. Um, yeah, it's it's very big and it's very spacious. Um, it goes from in zero to sixty seconds. It peaks at seven point three seconds. However, I feel like I feel like there's obviously significant drawbacks for me for the car. One being that the car only comes in one standard color. One being that the, the one being that the interior of the car comes in one standard color, but you're obviously able to change the exterior of the car to whatever you want as they've obviously um got varying different colors so they've got loads of different colors for the exterior of the car but for the interior of the car it's just one standard color which i think is pointless really and least, but with the exterior of the car obviously you can have it in many different colors do you know what i mean cars are meant to be more cost efficient um they're meant to be good um, for the environment. You pay little to no road tax on these vehicles. Um, not only that, as the car, and not only that, the car relies heavily on, as the car relies on electric, you could get the convenience of having a, like a charging station at home or or alternatively find your nearest um, electric charging station. So you can see that they are essentially thinking of the consumer in this particular vehicle, whereas most supercars, hypercars, they don't think about necessarily the consumer. I think, I think they more just think about speed and luxury. Now, one thing I didn't mention is the battery. Yep, the battery. Um, you're probably thinking, how so? Well, because, well, one of the reasons is because when I have previously um, spoken about electric cars, I was singing them from the rooftop. I was so into electric cars. I was like, yeah, electric cars are so great, blah, blah, blah. Um, but not really taking into account that the battery life, if something obviously goes wrong um, with the actual battery in the car, they're pricey. Pricey as in 20 grand pricey. Or not, to be quite honest. Yeah, I'm unsure as to whether or not BYD, Build Your Dream, does refurbished um 
batteries, but who knows, they probably do. Now, for me, one of the biggest things um, you need to be mindful of when you kind of um, buy cars such as these, such as this, is obviously the battery, ultimately, because I feel like the battery is the most, one of the most expensive things. Another model which I also found very interesting um, is the BYD, BYD seal. Now that car has so much space both in the front and the back. Um, yeah, both in the front and the back. It's a left hand drive and it's very, very spacious. Um, so much spacious that you can even fit golf clubs and, um, and pack it in the in the passenger side of the back of the car you can put your golf clubs in the back of the car in its bag at the back of the car because it's so so big um anyway those are my thoughts on the byd i feel like it's a very very innovative car um it's very it's obviously very popular because it made 632 million in the last quarter so yeah that's my thoughts on the car. Anyway, peace out. I dropped my bloody camera.